Welcome to another round of the Twisted Metal Tournament. This time we'll be taking out the sports car Spectre. It's second only to Mr. Grimm in terms of speed and maneuverability, which you might think would make it my second favorite car, but in actuality I see it as a monument to compromise. Spectre's driver is the clearly deranged Bloody Mary. He's got quite a dark story to share, so let's get into it. First time I knew I was different, I was just a little girl. There was this boy I really liked. One day I finally got up the courage to tell him. He pushed me down in the mud. He called me ugly. I've been alone ever since, always waiting and hoping for that certain someone to come my way. I remember right after college, all my friends with their perfect boyfriends and their society weddings. Every time one of those bitches got hitched, I'd freak. Eventually, they had to put me on meds just to calm me down. But then one day, in the asylum, I had a visitor. The gentleman's name was Calypso. He said if I won his game, I'd never have to be alone again. He said he knew where I could find my true love. How could I refuse an offer like that? After all, no one as pretty as me deserves to be alone. Hmm, did Calypso just propose to Bloody Mary? This can only play out weird, but for now we're looking at a very familiar loading screen, which is indicative of the fact that the drive-in is the alternate level to the snowy roads that we played last time. And it's also going to be very, very small and claustrophobic. In fact, much more so. This is an even smaller level than the snowy roads were. This one is kind of brilliantly underdesigned. It's just a very large square with the maximum number of enemies in it. No real place to run or hide. So you just gotta stand and fight. The main destructible is this bridge in the back, which has already been destroyed because there's so many missiles flying around everywhere. A very important part of playing this level is collecting the health pickups absolutely every time we see them. It's because we're going to be under constant assault. We're in a particularly fragile vehicle, so we need them. And because there is no recharge station in this level. So our only means of recovery is those four health pickups, whatever we can happen to collect from a helicopter, and any drivers we happen to run over from defeated vehicles. We also want to prevent enemies from collecting the health pickups, because there's so many enemies in such a small area, it just happens by accident all the time. That can really sway the balance of power in their favor. Not that it isn't already in their favor. Dark side directly in front of us, which we know is a real bad spot to be in. But by pinning myself to her bumper, when she inevitably unleashed her special, all it did was flip me over and deal exactly no damage, because it has to travel a certain distance before it actually does anything. Unbelievably risky strategy. I would never actually do that on purpose. It's just sort of a instinctive response to all the stress that I'm under while playing this level. Riding through this level at red health is exhilarating, but completely unsustainable. And yet, we can't just hide in a corner and wait for the health pickups to respawn. Simply too many threats at any given time. So we also have to be aggressive and make very good use of our invincibility. That was a max damage satellite attack that took out Darkseid once and for all. And a well-timed power attack to kill Crazy 8. My attempts to restore my health by running over the driver were interrupted by good old Sweet Tooth. It's pretty bad luck to get Sweet Tooth as an enemy here. It's very hard to dodge all of his missiles. Luckily, we're in a ridiculously fast car, so... If anyone's gonna do it, it's us. 
use my special attack there, you can just sort of fire it and forget it because it's almost guaranteed to hit. It can burrow through walls and terrain. As long as it has its target locked, it almost certainly will hit them. It's going to serve as well as a finisher after we badly damage our opponents in drive-by attacks. But we don't have a charge right now, so we gotta go head on. Need my revenge on Sweet Tooth. There we go. Beautiful example of the special taken out an enemy. And we were able to harvest the driver for some health as well. Got a few badly damaged enemies, but we need health before we even attempt to go after them. Nine out of ten times, I'm going to hit the helicopter's pickup the second it switches from being a health pickup. Now, Turbo is ridiculously useful in this level, obviously. It's really our only means of escape at any given time. But, because we're such a fast car, we don't absolutely need Turbo to survive. Yeah, just killed the projectionist booth, put an end to the movie. And Yellow Jacket was taken out by an opportunistic attack by an enemy, probably intended for us, of course. This level may be the truest test of skill in the game because it's so devoid of gimmicks. But you can also rely on the enemies to attack each other pretty consistently. That said, they're rarely going to kill each other, so you're still going to have to do 95% of the work yourself. We're not really in any position to be doing a lot of work. Our health being so low. But we have halved our enemy count. There goes another one. <laughs> I gotta say, this level is incredibly fun to play. That there is what happens when you fire the special missile without finding a target first. Just goes straight forward and explodes on the first thing it hits, which is rarely going to be an enemy. You want to make sure that an enemy's indicator arrow has turned red before you fire the weapon. The same is actually true of all homing weapons. They all turn the enemy's indicator red when they're locked on, which always kind of annoyed me, actually because Mr. Grimm's indicator is red by default, so if you're trying to pick him out of a crowd, you're never truly sure that you've got him. Perfect use of the special as a finisher. But even though I ran over the driver, I didn't recover any health, because I've used up that feature for this level. You only get a limited number of uses of the running over driver for health recovery. It's a good thing to be aware of, because driving through enemy wreckage usually sets your car on fire, which does have a damage over time effect. So if you don't recover health to negate that, it's kind of a waste. Managed to get back up to serviceable health anyway. And we've actually almost even the odds. Granted, Warthog's going to be a problem. He's got almost the highest armor in the game. And he's almost at full health as well. So, just hide behind the screen. Fire a missile right through it. Unfortunately, I did accidentally target Warthog, so Axel is still in the mix for the time being. Won't take too much to take him out. But, such low health, I do have to play defensively. Especially because getting anywhere near Axel guarantees he's gonna launch a special, which covers a area of effect. So that's him out of the way. One enemy left, and there is no one enemy left music for this level. Didn't bother. Too hectic. There goes Warthog. Even gunned down his driver in cold blood. And that puts this nightmare behind us. I'm actually kind of proud of how this turned out, having a full life to spare after dealing with all those enemies. I'm not sure whether or not I made it look easy, but that level was really, really hard. It cost me a lot of game overs to get that recording. It wasn't too frustrating, though, because the level is very fun. I quite enjoy both of the tiny levels that they give us a choice between, although I do slightly prefer the snowy roads. But after that against all odds victory, I'm certain Bloody Mary needs a break. Let's check in with her real quick before collecting her prize.
I was asleep for hours, dreaming about weddings. In fact, one very special wedding. I was one of the bridesmaids as usual. My friend Kristen, she was the one getting married. Can you believe what she did? She actually had the nerve to throw the bouquet to me, that little bitch! Looking back, I'm not sure it was such a good idea to come off my medication. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. You're just an ugly, fat cow. <laughs> I think that day, my heart just snapped in two. And I think my mind did the same. So I grabbed the closest thing I could find, and then I wasn't really sure what I did. If I wasn't going to have a man, then no one was. I dragged Kristen's fat, ugly body into one of the dressing rooms and bolted the door. Standing there in Kristen's dress, I realized I was the most beautiful bride I had ever seen. When I win this contest, Calypso will find me a man who thinks so, too. That was the disturbingly grounded tale of how Mary got the bloody moniker. I mean, everyone else was mutilated by pesticides or an unethical doctor, but Mary just stabbed a bride on her wedding day. Now is not the time to judge, though. She won fair and square, so let's check in with Calypso and see what he meant when he said she'd never be alone again. I'm sure there were quite a few sour faces in town when all the girls learned I'd won the contest. I demanded my prize from Calypso. I wanted to meet my true love. Calypso delivered. It was my darling. My sweetheart, and he was gorgeous. Calypso told me he had to make a few modifications, but what man doesn't need a little adjusting here and there? As he held me in his big, strong arms, he leaned in to whisper something in my ear. To this day, I still can't believe what he said. I will never love you. My God! I was so close, but this wasn't my true love at all. He wasn't anything like the man I thought he was. Certainly not good enough for a girl like me. My Prince Charming is out there. I know he is, and I'll find him. Even if I have to go through each and every man, one at a time. Really seems like Mary got ripped off in that ending, since she didn't get anything that she asked for. Just got another murder victim to add to her list. Seemed almost like she should have taken the sledgehammer to Calypso, but really only Sweet Tooth can get away with that sort of thing. It's really kind of tragic when even a lobotomized zombie won't love you. I guess there's nothing for it but for Mary to continue her killing spree and for us to continue ours next time.